Hello, everybody. This is Jody Ann Johnson. Welcome to Made in Miami, where we interview small businesses here locally to learn more about why they love doing business in Miami, how they got started in their business, and what their advice would be for others who are about to start a business or are looking to grow their businesses. Today, we're going to be with Liz Nivez of ILO Gear. Hi, Liz. Welcome to Made in Miami. Hi, Jody. Thank you so much, and I'm super grateful to be here. Yeah, we're delighted. So tell me a little bit about how people can find you, the name of the company, like the best way for them to be able to find you once they know how terrific you and your business are. All right. So we're he very heavily on social media <laughs> presence. So definitely on Instagram, it's Elo Gear. Uh, on Facebook, it's the same. We also have the .com as well. And then we do have a physical store here in Miami, which is our flagship. Okay, great. So Liz, tell me, how did you start this business and why did you start this business? I started this business out of necessity. Um, I, I, I am an immigrant, I'm a Cuban immigrant. I am an only child from a single mother. And when uh, my grandmother had passed away, I was 20 years old, going to the university, majoring in biology, believe it or not. Really? Yes. Um, <laughs> everybody thinks that's very funny. Um, she, my grandmother uh, passes away and we lived in a very small efficiency. She used to receive food stamps and was a great help when my mom worked in the factories in the 80s um, and 90s in the factories in Hialeah. So my grandmother passes away, my mom has a heart attack six months later, and I was basically up to feed us and pay the rent within that month. Wow. Um, yeah. So thankfully, I had taken sewing classes in high school. <laughs> I went to Core Gables High. You never know, right? Yeah. Thank God for those home ec classes. Um, actually, I, I ended up receiving a scholarship for actually creating garments. I had a home ec scholarship that I used for FIU. And I had a lot of friends that were dancers. And I reached out to them and said, guys, I'm in desperate need. Whatever you need, I'm here. Uh, I can make anything for you guys. I need extra money. And sure enough, I started that way. And before you knew it, it was like, you should make business cards. And then I was like, OK. And then I was like, why would I make business cards? I'm a biology major. And they're like, no, you should do it. And then now we're here. And then after, in 2015, after doing a lot of custom work and really having a very small mom and pop, very local business um, of one of a kind custom made, we decided let's take this national, let's grow this, let's implement it. And thankfully we've had you guys to come and help us oh. tremendously with Thank that. You. Um, we created Elo Gear. And so Elo Gear now is a national brand. We do sell internationally and we're in a few countries now. So Yeah, you were just in Italy, right? Correct. And in London as well. Great. Yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing exactly because my understanding is you're still doing the dancewear for the, you know, young uh, dancers, but you're also doing active wear. So say a little more about that. Correct. So one of the things um, originally when we created Elo Gear I decided I really wanted to go out into the active world. I've been an athlete my entire life. Uh, I've done a half Ironman. Yeah, I, I can see. Thank you. <laughs> I, I've, I've ran marathons, half Ironmans. I've done track and field since I was in middle school. So um, my mentor said to me, you know, you've been in the dance world. You already have an audience. You already have a clientele. If you launch under an active wear platform, um, I'm sorry, a dance wear platform, you would be able to have a return on investment right away. And so now, for this year, we're actually launching the activewear portion of it, and we're very, very excited. So. Okay, good. All right, so tell me about a challenge in the business and how you've been able to overcome it. One challenge? 
Watch out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I guess that's not a very well-worded question, is it? <laughs> one challenge. Uh, most one challenge. entrepreneurs have lots and lots of challenges. Lots of but challenges. Just, what's, what's one of them that you, a big one that you overcame? All right. So I think for me, one of the biggest challenges that I overcome, especially in the apparel industry, is finance. Um, financial, getting, uh, you know, having capital and cash flow to launch the next collection, be able to have the proper marketing, staying consistent, staying on top of, of the market with an ever super quick changing market right now where people just want new product out every week. Mm. So as a, as a small brand that we still are, uh, we're faced with those challenges. So I think it would be, my answer would be uh, finance. Uh, yeah. Cash flow. Cash flow, correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so about other challenges, what are some of the ones that you see in your industry, you know, that are common? Okay. So as for here in South Florida, one of the things, that, I mean, when I spoke about factories being here in 1980 and the 90s, um, and there were many factories in Hialeah and we had all these Cuban immigrants and all these people that worked in the factories. So right now we have a huge scarcity of that. We don't, we don't have enough of Made in America here in Miami. It's more in LA or in New York. So I, it's just now starting to come back a little bit more and we're able to find a lot more sourcing and, and factories here um, now. Uh, so we're, I'm really hopeful that we'll be able to one, have these factories here and two, start getting in the, the labor force that yep. would be able to work in these factories and manufacture made in America products. Yeah, because um, the state of Florida actually incentivizes manufacturing Correct. here in South Florida. But we also have to have the workers. Very important, exactly. I've, I've, I actually have had this conversation before with a few other people and I really feel that if we, through education at any of the vocational schools, we can get immigrants that are coming here um, and have them be legal through the education system and incorporate themselves into learning how to do and work in America and be legal here and understand what it is to be an American and then incorporate them into our workforce. That would be an amazing, amazing in incentive. It would be amazing for people coming in. I mean, I'm, I'm that, I'm that story, you know, and I'm so grateful that we were able to, to come to this country and that my mom was able to work in the factories. I mean, look at where I am now. Look to what that led to, right. right? Yeah. So as an entrepreneur, you have to juggle many, many things. You're a mother, you're a wife, you're a business owner, yeah. you're a superstar. <laughs> it's so how do you manage it all? How do you stay focused? Meditation. So uh, I've done it on and off. I've done uh, mindful meditation. And specifically, uh, I'm currently doing a class at UM right now for the MBSR class. Um, it's an MBSR class. So that is a mindful stress reduction program. Oh. Um, and it just sounds really complicated, but it really is. And it's just an eight week course that you take that provides you with tools on how to handle stress, how to be able to be living more in the moment. At the end of the day, that's the class. The rest is the practice. The rest is how committed you are to practicing every day, how you implement everything that you learn. Basically. You get up early. Yes, I do. And you run. <laughs> yeah, I, d I don't run as much anymore. Uh, okay. Now I'm lifting weights because oh I feel boy. that I, you know, I'm getting a little older, so it's time to <laughs> you know, pump up those muscles a little more. Yeah, yeah. L a lot less running now. No more than three miles now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. All right, so Liz, if you only had $1,000, to invest in your company, what would you invest it in? Yes, I, I, I've had this question happen before and, and people have asked me that and I think is advertising. Um, right now, um, I've always said it, I would be just a small little warehouse manufacturing anything in Westchester, Miami. And nobody would know how amazing our product is, everything that the company stands for, what our message is to the world, if it wouldn't be through advertising. And there's a lot of very cost-effective ways to do it now more than ever. With social media, it's so simple to start it yourself and, and really be able to grow with that. And then eventually you do have to hand it over to a company, but it, it is an amazing tool. And um, so you could do it very cost-effectively at the very beginning. So $1,000 would actually go a very long way. 
Um, like on Instagram or something like that? Right through social media. Yeah. I think the social media outlets allows us to, to do so much. And then we have a Shopify uh, platform for our website. So with that, um, it's all integrated and it allows to be able to click and go directly into the to, into the shopping market of it. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And so what advice would you give to somebody who wanted to start a business? Business plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sign up with you guys. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. What is it about the business plan that you think makes a difference? Because sometimes people are like, what do we need a business plan for? Why do you think it's important? Well, one, I started without one. So now, looking back, that's the reason I'm saying it. That's one reason I'm saying it. Number two, it's for more than any other reason, not necessarily for investors or for people to see it or to have to say you did it is because it structures your head. It really asks you and makes you face questions that are so important for you to answer that once you are in the business, you're just running at a thousand miles an hour when you're a small business and an entrepreneur. You're doing 17 jobs in one day. I mean, you're cleaning <laughs> bathroom at the same time that you're writing checks <laughs> <laughs> and designing and picking fabric and seeing customers. That all happens within a two hour span. Right. So that allows you to really be able to work, you know, on the business, not just in the business, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel that that would be my advice to someone. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because we often advise people do the business plan, not so you have the book or the, the, the document, but so that you've done the thinking. Correct. Because it, let's say you do go to an investor or a bank and you're standing there, they know because of how you speak that you've actually done the thinking, whether they ever look at the document or not. Right? That is correct. Yes, that is they're correct. investing in you and your ability to pull it off. So Liz, to finish up, what's great about doing business in Miami? So as somebody that travels a lot, uh, I'm gone eight months out of the year, 10 to 20 days. There's not one single time that I don't want to come back. I love coming back home, not just because of the beautiful weather that we have, the food, but more importantly, the mix of culture that we have here. It really opens you up to being more accept have more acceptance towards people. It actually is an empowerment when you do travel, especially for someone like me that I had never traveled anywhere. I mean because of where I come from, we didn't have that financial means, but yet I had met people from a lot of different places in the world. Um, so I think that that would be one of my number one reasons, aside, that, aside from that, I think we do have the most beautiful people in the world here. <laughs> a lot of people speak to the, this, the wonder of the diversity of people that live here in Miami, the yes. mix of cultures, and how this kind of sleepy Southern town has become a real international city Correct. where everyone is welcome. Yeah. Correct. And, and, I, and I feel that it, it truly is, and it, whether someone's aware of it or not, it, it is an asset to you, whether you use it or not. Every day you're dealing with people from all over the, the world with their culture and their idiosyncrasies, and you have to deal with that in the business world, and you have to honor certain things that are as important to them that if you only dealt with people that are, you know, unicultural, you wouldn't have to do that. So I think it also gives you, on a greater scale, scale, that insight when you do step out of Miami and are starting to do business nationally or even internationally, of course. Yeah. Liz, thank you for being with us. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. And that is Made in Miami.